peace from God the Father and from the Son Jesus be with all of us this morning. From the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45, the words of Elizabeth to Mary. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. expression of thanksgiving and as well as adoration, worship. But it was for a reason, for a beautiful reason. We don't see much of that. But we have when we, when we listen to the gospel and we start to think about the things that happened before this little conversation in between Mary and Elizabeth, then we will see and realize and understand and praise God because it was something special. It was actually a meeting of two mothers, two moms, two expectant mothers, one old and one very, very young. The beautiful thing and the fact about that meeting is that both were expecting something that was totally unexpected. Both of them were pregnant when they really should not be. Or at least in the natural course of life, they would not be. But this is Christmas, right? In Christmas, is when the miracles happen. Christmas is when the impossible, when God makes the impossible becomes possible. Like siblings talking again after a long time. Yes, I, I, was, I, I had a friend and he said, he was mad with his brother for a long time and he said, my goodness, this Christmas I have to come back and talk to my brother again. This is one of the little, the little um, miracles that happen in Christmas time. But the one that happened with, uh, and I guess it is because people feel like is Christmas and the season of Advent surrounded with so much love and so many beautiful things that I want to do something nice and beautiful. I want to go back and talk with the person with whom I was mad for a long time. It is time for forgiveness. It is time to joy, to rejoice with Jesus, with Mary, with John and Elizabeth. <laughs> and this meeting, uh, uh, Mary lives in city, her city, and goes to a city in Judah. We don't know exactly where, we, where he was. She just found out she was pregnant. Elizabeth is six months pregnant. She goes into the house of Elizabeth to share the great news she received from the angel. You will be pregnant. You will carry the Savior of this world. And Mary, the first thing she wants to see and do, it is to share. Both of them, like I said, should not be pregnant. But before God wanted it to happen, He did. Because, because God had a plan for both of them, then they were pregnant. And they were not pregnant because they God wanted to satisfy them or because God wants to give them something. No. It was because it was God's plan to do that. It was because God's love for all of us that both of them were pregnant. John would be the forerunner of Christ. He would prepare the hearts and minds of the people to receive Christ. And then Christ will come to the world to be our Lord and our Savior. The Savior of the whole world. But today we need to give, we need to give some credit to Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. She is the one, then the whole story, 
had the best response to God when God called her to work. And I wish all of us would respond to God in that way when God sometimes calls us all for service, for worship service, for working, to fulfill spots and all the all the places and all the duties we have as Christians to fulfill and all the work we have to do in church. I'd just like to remember some of the responses we had before Mary when God needed men and women to perform their duties. When God called Moses and said, I cannot even speak to Lord while you're calling me. And God said, Moses, I will put all the words in your mouth so you go. Go and talk to the king of Egypt. When God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, I'm just only a child. How can I speak words of repentance to your people? And when God called Zechariah, remember, Zechariah said, that, that thing can really happen. God is telling Zechariah, Zechariah, you're going to be a father. Even you are 90 years old or 70 years old. We don't know exactly how old he was. How oh, this thing can be. Doubting. Like saying, God, I'm not sure this thing can happen. Maybe try someone, but not me. Someone younger. But look what Mary said to God. When God called Mary and said, as a teenager, 15, 17, we don't know exactly. Very young. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. The beauty of Christmas season is starts with Mary and the way she responds to God. That's the beauty of the season. It's a plan that God elaborated to all of us. Christ to the Virgin Mary. The fourth Sunday in Advent we call a visitation when Mary visits Elizabeth to tell that now she is responsible to carry God on her womb. And she comes inside of that house and she and she talks with Elizabeth. It sounds like, seems like the two babies are talking as John lived on Elizabeth's womb as the Holy Spirit moved him to do that. It was a, it was a wonderful encounter, I'm sure. You know, we know, we know the gospel. We all know the gospel. We hear the gospel every Sunday. I believe when Mary got into the house of Elizabeth, when John lived inside of the womb of Elizabeth, he was he was listening to the gospel. Because Jesus is the gospel. Because Jesus is the good news. And this is how we call gospel. Gospel is the good news. So Mary comes into the house of Elizabeth and Zechariah, the one that doubted and could not speak for the whole Elizabeth pregnancy because God punished him for not believing. Now they're all praising God because the gospel just got into their house. It's Jesus' presence that changes everything. And he was if you read carefully the reading of the gospel, see it was by the Holy Spirit. It was by the Holy Spirit that Elizabeth said, Blessed are you, Mary, and blessed it is the fruit of your womb. Before that, the reading said, the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit as she remarkably sat down. Blessed are you, Mary, and blessed it is the fruit of the womb. That was the promise 
of God to all the world. That the fruit of marriage womb will be the one that will enrich and sustain all of us into our journey to the holy and eternal life. As the fruit comes and dies on the cross and shed his blood, we are all blessed with the forgiveness of sins. And the blessing of whole life and eternal life. God brought Jesus to this world to make all of us excited about our Christian life. See, there was 400 years, almost 400 years of no communication, no prophets proclaiming anything. And at the seventh comes John proclaiming the good news. And then at the seventh comes Jesus. So that was the great news. Now we have something to expect, something to be happy about it. The Son of God is coming to the world to be a Lord and Savior. Listen to Him. He is. He is our Lord and Savior. He is Emmanuel. And just like John and Elizabeth, it is to the Holy Spirit that we are called to this joy and to this privilege of being sons and daughters of God. Christmas, yes, reveals Christ, Christmas, Christ to the world. But he also reminds us the great love God the Father shows to all of us in sending his Son to us. Listen to the words of Hebrew chapter 10. I told this, nobody understood in the beginning, but I told uh, the ladies, the evening young lady, uh, where the Bible says that the men should make coffee, or brew coffee. Nobody could tell me, and I said, Hebrews. Hebrews. <laughs> you didn't know that, though? <laughs> yeah. Listen to. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. And by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. It is through the body. So Jesus needs to be made man and flesh to be Lord and Savior and to pay for our sins. This is what so beautiful in the book of Hebrews says to us today. But everything starts when Mary accepts the call and accepts the challenge. You see so many people will be saved. The whole world will be saved because Jesus Christ came to the world. And imagine if all of us and all the people to whom we preach Jesus Christ would accept the call and it's time to spread the good news of salvation, then a half of the world would not be unchristian. And the challenge for us today, as Christmas comes so close, it is to listen. God is calling. Emmanuel is coming. We have work to do. We have many people to share the gospel with. The good news are upon us. The angels are proclaiming, Emmanuel is with us. He is our Lord and our King. He comes to redeem all of us. And He comes to give us peace with God. What a wonderful, what a wonderful news He brings with us. May God bless us all as we celebrate this beautiful season of Christmas. In Jesus' name, Amen.